Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank you for visiting my channel. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button before you leave. And if you like the content here, uh, consider subscribing. Uh, uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to my uh, patrons over at Patreon. They help make this possible. Uh, if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description. Uh, or if you just want to, uh, if you just enjoy the content and you want to tip me, there's a link to buy me a coffee, which uh, you can do if you want to as well, but it's certainly not required. Um, generally, if you watch my videos, I've been doing a big project on the weekend. Um, I do kind of a smaller project on Tuesdays, and then Thursdays I've been trying to do kind of a, a tip or a strategy or just some little trick that I've learned over the years. And uh, the one I wanted to show today is that uh, something that I accidentally discovered when I was trying to achieve a look um, way back when I first started. And it's a way to create a, a real easy uh, concave uh, shape to the outside of a band, just like a simple band. Um, so that's what we'll be talking about today. So stay tuned. So this is one of those things that I discovered when I was trying to figure out a way to do something else. And uh, what I was trying to do is, I was way back when I first started and I didn't have a lot of different materials. And I wanted to create a band that looked kind of wider than the sheet that I had. I just had 26 gauge sheet like this. Um, but I did have some 14 gauge uh, round wire, or square wire I should say, like this here. And uh, I thought, well, what if I just solder a little bit to the edge of each side of the band of this thin sheet, and then when you bend it into a, a ring, it should have a thicker looking profile. You know, it'll have the 14 gauge uh, square wire right here along with the sheet. And when you look at it on the side of your ring, it'll look thicker, you know, like it's made out of thick sheet. <clears throat> but it did something I wasn't expecting, and that's uh, it created a concave outside when I did that. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's measure for a band and then we'll kind of make a, a real quick band here. Okay, I'm just cutting a strip of paper here. Make sure I'm afraid. It should be pretty good. So let's say we're going to make a size 7. We may not get the size perfect on this one. It's been a long time since I tried to do this, but I'm going to add quite a bit extra this time because this is actually going to be pushed outwards by the square wire. So I'll make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> so that is going to be how long a piece of this 26 gauge sheet we need. So I'm just going to make a little mark here. Mark that right here. I'm just going to measure how far that one is. Well, that's about roughly a half inch, or if you're in Europe or somewhere else in the world, maybe 12 millimeters. My second grade teacher insisted that we were switching to the metric system back in 1974. I'm still waiting. I wish they would. It's a much more logical system. Okay, so I scribed out a little. You can see that? Just kind of a rectangle of silver. That's this is the like I said, the thin sheet, it's 26 gauge. And a little piece of scrap 14 laying on the table, so I'll use this one for the edge on this side. And I'm going to cut it just a little bit longer. I'd rather have too much than not enough. And then I'll measure another piece here. I've dug and probably found another piece of down, but... find these wide nose pliers uh, great for straightening wire if you're new to this. They don't ding up the metal quite as much 
especially if you use them just to hold the wire and you use your fingers uh, to manipulate the wire itself and just use the pliers for leverage. So I think I understand why the square wire on the edge of the sheet does what it does when we saw it, when we solder it on there and then and make it into a circle. Um, and it has to do with the fact that square wire, and if you've watched some of my other videos, I've talked about this before, when you go to bend square wire, you're trying to, uh, let's say I'm bending it this way, you're stretching out the back side here and you're compressing the inside here wherever you're bending it. So whenever you do that, it tries to find an easier way to turn because that's a really hard way to bend it. So it tends to sort of torque sideways and you get kind of a twist uh, kind of thing going on. And I think that has to do with why this happens. Now, I'm not a physicist, so don't quote me on that, but if you are a physicist, maybe you can confirm or disprove my theory for science. <laughs> I'm just trying to make this a little straighter. Sometimes my line scribing isn't as straight as I would like. If you're a first timer here, you should check out some of my other videos. I've uh, recently passed 100 videos on the site, on the YouTube channel. And I think there's a lot of valuable, useful information, especially uh, if you're first learning this kind of stuff. And there's some good projects for people who also have some experience, I think, and maybe just need some inspiration. Nothing wrong with getting a little inspiration somewhere. Okay, so in order to prevent having a lot of sloppiness uh, on the solder here, I'm going to pre-melt some solder on these wires. It's called sweat soldering. And then we'll, uh, we'll just plop them right there and we'll heat it to the point where it flows again and then it should stick to the piece of sheet. Square wire, you get it straight in one dimension, then you flip it 90 degrees and it's not even close to straight. <laughs> so it's kind of a dance back and forth. Try to find a flattish spot here. I use, uh, if you've never visited my channel before, I use uh, pretty much exclusively hard silver solder. Flux I use is um, Mighty Flux from Rio Grande. I just tell people that because I get those questions a lot. And I'll put the materials I'm using on the description of the video, along with a couple of other links to my website, Buy Me a Coffee, Patreon, those kinds of things. Okay. a little bit of solder along the length of these guys. Oopsie. I'd rather have lots of solder than not enough solder. So let's get it kind of spread out a little bit on the wire. Let's see it kind of melt there. Okay. Let's do the other one. So now it comes the see if I'm steady tonight or not.
Let me cool this one off. It's got a little bit of a warp to it, so it's having trouble sitting on top of that solder. And so I'm going to go ahead and quench it for a second. I'll reflux it then after I get it straightened out. So what I'll do is when I spray some flux on here, and then I dry the flux, I'm probably going to try and um, use the, the gooeyness of the flux to kind of tilt this up so it's sitting the way I want it to. Hopefully that'll work. If not, we'll try another tactic. I don't care if there's a little on the side on either side because I'm just going to file that down flush. So let's go ahead and heat this. Most of the mass is in the two wires probably, so the hard part is getting the sheet up to temperature. The wires are being on top. Uh, actually, what I should say is the wires being on top with the most mass will be easy to heat because they're right up top. Normally, the, the problem is the sheet laying flat on the flat on the pad like this. That's sometimes a problem. Okay. Just trying to make sure that I get a seam all the way down on both sides. like it's soldered down on those sides. I'm going to file it flush on either side. That's probably good enough. You kind of see, um, that's kind of, you know, I was trying to make it look like a thicker ring, like that from the edge make it look more, uh, I don't know, masculine or something, because I was trying to come up with ways to make men's rings, I think. And uh, and so, let's see what happens when I make this into a, into a, a circle. But now, it depends on which way I have the square wires. So the first way I'm going to do it is we'll go around with the square wires on the inside. Let's see what happens. i to snip off these ends here. File those down, too. Good, I think. Let's grab the mandrel here and bend it up here. You can already see it happening. See what it's doing there? It's creating kind of a cool concavity. So, uh, for me, when I'm doing bands, I usually bend them. other straight on and then we'll round it back out afterwards. I'm going to try and do that in a way where I don't put a lot of dings in the metal. At this point I probably would pull it apart just a little bit. Make sure that these are smooth lines on the ends. I'd like the join here to be relatively seamless. like oh when I make a band I need to push these a little bit past where they need to go. Kind of like that. The reason I 
do that is so that when I pull them back, they're going to be springing back towards each other. When I do that now, they'll be pressing against each other firmly. I'm going to tip it over here and get a flux on the outside edge. some more. Trying to get rid of any bumps there. Okay, so you can see how it's kind of come out relatively con concave like that. So I'm going to do a little cleanup with the file and we'll see what we end up with. It's a little bit uneven and stuff so I need to to work on that a little bit and then I'll uh, pickle it and we'll take a look at it. Alright, did a bit of cleanup with the Dremel and with the file and everything and I think I got it shaped pretty well. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it up just a bit and throw it in my pickle jar. Let it pickle for a bit and then uh, I'll polish it up and show you what it looks like. Polished it up after we pickled it and you can see, uh, see how it's got that nice concavity all the way around. So <clears throat> I showed this on a video because it was one of those surprising things that caught me off guard when I was first doing this and since then I've used it a few times to make some concave uh, bands. You can mount stones on them if you want to and it, look, it makes for a different look. Uh, I could see some some ideas for some earrings, uh, maybe bracelets. There's all sorts of things you could do just to create kind of that shape for some sort of pendant or something. I don't know. You guys tell me what do you think uh, you could do with these things? I could see a lot of different variations. Tell me in the comments what you think. Yeah, that was the concave fan. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. Uh, check out my website too. I have some real pretty jewelry there that's for sale. And uh, there's a link up in the top right hand corner of the main YouTube page, as well as a link to um, in the description to my Patreon if you're interested in really pursuing this. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and helpful. Uh, take care. Happy silversmithing.